The name could not be more fitting. What's going on guys? My name is Matt Omega and welcome to the finale of the Submachine series. We are playing Submachine 10, the exit, the last game in the, uh, last game in the, well, canonical timeline. I mean, there's still spin-offs, but whatever, we'll get to them later. Anyway, last time in Submachine 9, the temple, we, well, we went through the, uh, the temple. We also found that, uh, Murtad and Liz had died. Which left us questioning what exactly we had left to do. Well, there's one thing left we can do. Let's try to escape from the submachine once and for all. Let's go. Oh, that is very, very familiar. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so... We've made it somewhere. So that does remind me a lot of uh, how broken the South Garden was back in Sub Machine 7. We the King welcome you in Northern Garden Docks. Anyone who seeks peace and calmness will find it under the leaves of our blessed Flore. So I guess we're... We have to be back near the Winter Palace then. So that explains all of the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> There's an anchor on this dock, dock number three. I'll have to keep that in mind. Anything up this ladder? Whoa! Light sphere. Alright, looks cool. That does nothing. Alright, let's move ahead. Everything is broken. Alright. This light sphere. Chuck in there. And with that we can uh we can move through walls. Awesome. So let's see what's here for us. Alright, well, there was something docked at number three, so we'll pull that one. What do we have over here? We have a backpack! Extra storage! We actually have extra storage! <laughs> now, there was always a case where we could possibly fill up our inventory and uh, just run out of space, but now, extra storage. Where's okay. that ship ID number? Uh, well, we don't have one of those. Very broken down there. I wonder if we can fix all this. So keep going and find out. Up here, yep, we have access to a ship. There's a ship ID number. <laughs> right. Now, while we're going through a bunch of this stuff, just to end it all off, I'd like to start going through everything we know so far. So I put the ship ID number in here. We have a, a bottle fuse. So, we have submachines. They are submerged machines, literally structures that exist underground. We have the subnet, the network of submachines, which is a very, very large network in which all the submachines are connected in some way, mostly by portals, sometimes by physical means. Chuck a bottle fuse in there, and we have power. We can power up the ship. We know that there are different sections of the subnet. The two biggest ones being the core and the outer rim. The core being the very center of the subnet. The outer rim being an expanse of submachines that spontaneously grew from within the confines of what we now know as the core. They're also separated by the edge, which is a defense system to defend against human infestation. Huh. Nothing in there. I wonder if these, these do anything. Oh, they... Alright. Cool. Now, within the core, there were also experiments with some kind of major plan in mind. This plan had something to do with the fact that there are seven... Well, now we know eight dimensions in which everything exists. Also, just there we picked up a door valve. And what the plan constituted was having to do with how a location connects with its equivalent across the different layers. Most of the time, this can end up being that the area will look very different, or in some cases, like in an area of the subnet known as the Knot, it can be exactly the same and be kind of a tying point between all the layers. S3C. Looks like something goes there. In here. 
Insert captain's ID card. Right. Whatever this plan was, we can assume it had something to do with copying the layers from an original dimension. Because as we found out, the third layer of the seven, the major seven anyway, um, was some kind of copy of an original dimension. So layers can be copied and we can assume that the plan had something to do with that. Okay, this is a ladder piston, so we can use that for something later. But this plan couldn't fall through because of the sudden, spontaneous, exponential expansion of the subnet into what we now know as the Outer Rim. Just a complete clusterfuck of submachines beyond what we could possibly map within a lifetime. And because of that, the plan went awry. We couldn't keep up. Okay, through this, we have a Karma Portal leading us somewhere. Now, what could have caused the expansion of the Outer Rim? It could have been a number of things. Did it have something to do with humans trying to build their own submachine within the core, which is what we now know as the root? Did it have something to do with Murtar's experiments with Karma Portals, which have the ability to inadvertently completely rip a dimension apart? if not done properly. Oh, strange machine here. We got St. Christopher. There's a bunch of things at work here. So, maybe we can somehow tie it all together. And of course, says Murtar himself. A human who apparently had the ability to see all the layers all at once. And during an accident on a holiday, had his arm cut off but was somehow able to see his arm yet in all other seven layers and bring them together to create portals of karmic energy, which can allow him to travel between destinations and the layers themselves. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Looks like it's incomplete, so I'll have to try and fix it all up. And we also have Elizabeth, who is an acquaintance of Murtaz, and at this point, possibly a friend who, well, knows a hell of a lot more than uh, anyone should, probably should at this point. So, there's a lot of factors working here. Anyway, our main method of transporting in this game will be this thing here. This is basically, uh, it's a portal. Except uh, no numbers here, we just kind of got a binary combination here. So, we'll go through these one at a time and see what we can find. Hmm. So, with all that being said, let's see if we get any more answers and see if we can tie any of that together. Royal Storage Facility number 32. Alright, so this game, this game is actually quite a bit bigger than Sun Machine 9, so you can expect it to have the same problem where, uh, we can get some serious frame droppage. It doesn't quite get as bad as some areas in the Sun Machine 9 though, so it's a little more bearable, but you can expect there to be a little more of it over places because of how much bigger the game is. Caution, temporal anomaly leak ahead. Okay. Now I could have sworn I didn't go down two. Oh. Yeah, so uh, we kind of got uh, some looping going on here, so we can't go any further that way. Well, I guess we just better go in here. Alright, now there's a bunch of little area, little storage areas like this in which we're going to be able to find stuff, and each one you'll have to navigate a bit differently. This one, well, is random where you end up, but up here, we have our first secret of 10 in this game, and I'm going to be storing these inside the backpack. So let's see what we can find here. So yeah, in this area, trying to go places is completely random. So good luck trying to find what you need to. <laughs> anyway, here we have a vector finder. We'll be finding a few of these as well. So we'll hold on to that in the backpack. And we got this thing, which uh, obviously we need to put four of something in there. So let's try and find what exactly those somethings are. I don't think I've explored every room in this place yet. But, uh, it's hard for me to intentionally do so because it's all random. Ah, this. Karma Fuse. Which is what we'll be putting in there. 
Now we actually have everything in here for the time being. And once we put all four Karma Fuses in that device, we'll be able to open up this one. But for now, best thing for us to do is, if this place will let me, get out <laughs> and try to explore anywhere else. Now, over this way. Royal Storage Facility number 33. Right, head down here. Storage unit 33-1, or slash 1. All right, we also have loop stabilizers, which we'll also need for something in this area. Another Karma Fuse. Now, this storage facility, if I recall, only has these three rooms. So, we've basically explored everything we need to here, and we don't need to come back. Yeah, we have a uh, very sterile metallic looking location. Which is where we are going to be putting these loop stabilizers. Now I believe each direction leads somewhere a bit different. There's only one other room in each direction. I'll need to come back if once we have more loop stabilizers. 33 slash 3. Now this is one of the storage areas where it can become a little bit of a maze. Also, we found one of these things, and we saw something that looked a little bit like it in the uh, initial location. So, if I remember where I'm going... So, we're going to need to... Oh, well, we just saw a switch back there. With our uh, one dot on it. And now that we've uh, flipped the turny thing on that device around to paste one dot, we can activate that. Now we just need to find the one with two dots. I just need to remember where it is. Because again, this one is very much a maze. Oh, got our first document. Oh, no. Sorry, how did he escape after all? Go to the lighthouse, naturally. How else? Yep. That would be talking about Murtar escaping from the core of the subnet and ending up in the outer rim, which is where the lab is located. Which begs the question, did he have to go through the loop? Just like we did. Oh god. Ah, oh, here we are. Whew, I was getting lost. Uh, Alright. Now I need to look for the third one, which, right from that, is just directly down. Will this take me back? No. Alright. Back right this way. We've activated all those and put it back in its original position. Now I just need to find a correlating device. Which, there it is, right under the uh, three. And we get ourselves another loop stabilizer. Now if I can just find my way out, because we are done in here. Alrighty. Here you go. Oh, how many of these do I have? Two. Alrighty. So this one is a bit of a maze as well, in the fact that you need to go in specific directions to be able to find where exactly you want to go. Also very restrictive, as you can see. <laughs> Alright, so I'm looking for a few things here. Alright, we got our first picture, which is some kind of rune. We also want this long stick, which I'll put in our inventory. Go this way. Find another Karma Fuse. Up again. Yep. Find one of those. From here, we also want to go down this way, this way. Yep. Alright, then from there, we can open up this and get a, another loop stabilizer. Now, we just need one more of these things to access uh, whatever it is in that other storage unit, but now that we have another three Karma Fuses, we can go back to the first one we looked in and... Yeah, this is chugging. <laughs> and see if we can unlock anything, assuming that I can get in and get out quickly, because freaking random. Alright. Close three in. Turn that. Go look again. Here we are. We have another loop stabilizer. That should be all of the ones that we need. So, back into the other storage facility. This one's at least easy because it's always to the left. Alright. Let's, uh, see where this takes us. Oh, not again! <laughs> Back in the loop. Fuck. <laughs> Alright. Now, fortunately, we don't have an infinite expanse ahead of us. We do have a puzzle here that we can't 
uh, solved just yet, because as you saw, we need a valve, and we don't have a valve on us. But, just like the uh, radar storage units, it's completely random where we end up. We can't do anything here at the moment, so we are going to get the ever-living fuck out of there. And try another location. Go for the second one. First thing over here, we've got a big hole. A lot of, just a lot of resin all over the place. Power all range confirmers before operating hatch. This is a range confirmer. So uh, we're one step ahead. <laughs> Alrighty. Now for this, we want to open that hatch because release both drill clamps before operating the drill. Here's the other clamp handle. So we can chuck that on there. Open that, pull this lever, pull this handle, and we can go underground. Right, so here's another uh, range confirmer, so it tells us what exactly we need to do with these things. Right, this way, chuck that in. Looks like some kind of hatch. I we'll need to find a way to open it. Like that. There's another range confirmer slot there. Go over this way. This is the door we're trying to open. And here is an airlock handle. Wait, is that... Okay, so these are airlocks, apparently. Put that in, open that up. Third range confirmer. Chuck that in there. So now, we can... Back out of there, go back down the big hole over here. Pull this. And we'll open that hatch. Back in. Got a fair bit of back and forth here. <laughs> and we got another portal. Alright. Hey! We're back on the roof of the lab, although it looks like it's seen better days. <laughs> I think you get the gimmick of this game now. We're going to be revisiting at least one area of every single game that we've played up to this point. I got a bit of force field here, but that's easily taken care of. Force field plasma canister. Alright, we've got another uh, light sphere. Cool. I found my grave today. A proper tomb, in fact. Well, I guess it's bound to happen sooner or later if you're a time traveler. Oh, I've also found your tomb right next to mine. Oh, that's so sweet of them. Well. Okay. Not only has Murtar seen his own tomb, he's a time traveler. Meaning he might still be alive. If he's still alive, then Liz might still be alive. And... Maybe there's more hope on that front. Well, we're here to escape the submachine once and for all, but if we find them along the way, it'll be a good sign. I got a ladder step there. Exploration teams and restoration staff only. Which is not me. <laughs> Uh, apparently, even after all the work I did back in the lab, I'm still not officially part of the exploration team. <laughs> but it said restoration team as well. I wonder what that's about. Anyway, let's head into the... There's got to be a better way to go about this. Uh, zero, zero, 001. <laughs> go with that. Looks like something goes there. This is a thing. Hey, we got a jackal head. Whoa! Yeah, that actually brings us on the other side of uh, the portal here. So, we may have to use that for something. Hieroglyphs in the Eye of Horus. Uh, just bring on the Egypt vibes. I love them. <laughs> we don't know the combination for it yet, so... The... Well, that's part of it. <laughs> I actually need to find a few of these, uh, three of them actually. There's a second one! So we got little foot, whatever that is, uh, squiggly line. But uh, what else goes in? It might give us something here if we manage to solve it. We just need to, you know, solve it. Alrighty. Well, let's go on to the next area. Alright. Got some doors here and oh, put this right here. 
make ourselves a little bridge. I don't know how we controlled it enough to do that, but that yeah, more broken stuff. Alright. What's this? We're in a loop. Yes, I know. There are anom anomaly leaks everywhere. But we're not in one right now, are we? No, not horizontal loop. Vertical one. What do you mean? Look through my microscope, then look through my telescope. You'll see. Alright. Uh... I don't get it. <laughs> Honestly, that's one thing I, uh... I never actually come to understand is what it actually meant by that. Now, maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but I can't even see any correlating patterns here. Again, maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but... Oh, well. <laughs> I've already admitted I don't understand, so I won't try and pry it any further. <laughs> Triple-A battery! Well, hold on to that. <laughs> we always need more batteries. Right, and we got another vector finder here. But uh, this looks like some sort of... Uh, Look, some sort of place where people were doing uh, research, it's like another lab or something like that. But uh, there's more to explore here, and we'll have to do that next time on Let's Play Sun Machine 10 The Exit. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, guys, my name is Matt Omega, and I'll see you guys later.